just an introduction. Basically, um, I'm, I've been, I participated in the previous, two years ago, the Biohackathon. Um, but what I've been working on for the past two years is uh, what my sister Kyoko uh, presented, uh, the Glide Token repository, which is basically an international repository for storing glycan structures. Um, and so I was the, basically the main uh, the chief architect on, on that entire website. Um, which is was basically first developed uh, through that project and based completely on RDF uh, as a as a data store. Um, and so, what I'd like to talk about is basically what I learned through doing this project and the changes that we're going to, uh, we're going to be implementing to see if there's any uh, points of collaboration um, with anybody uh, during this hackathon. Um, one, one of the main points that, uh, basically this is uh, on the left hand side then, is what we first started implementing for the, for the project. Um, basically using a Java library for RDF transactions uh, and using Jenkins for uh, CI as well as uh, a Spring MVC web framework. Um, and so what we'd like to switch over to is basically the, the Sparkleist API server, uh, I think it was mentioned before, uh, but, but basically, this is a, a really nice project to be able to manage Sparkle queries and basically uh, provide an API, a quick and easy API server for your for your triple store. Um, and so that, that makes it a lot easier for developers because there's no messing around with Java and everything is um, very straightforward, all completely in Sparkle, and it converts it into JSON. Um, for CI, uh, I, I'm a big fan of GitLab right now. Uh, it's, it's, I'm switching over from GitHub to, to GitLab, mainly because of the CI, uh, CI uh, functionality that they have. And, and so I'd like to talk about uh, a little bit what they offer. Uh, and then uh, web components, uh, basically, uh, I, I think it was mentioned before also that the, bits, uh, having a standardized method um, is, is basically uh, allows us to more uh, effectively share the development that we that we do during this project, um, and so basically uh, this last part is the stuff that I'm working in, in the future. Um, but wh why CI? Um, in, in general, it, it helps uh, sp speed up development time that we've uh, that's very precious for us, um, and. Uh, Infrastructure configurations, they can be completely put on, on Git. Um, so what that offers is uh, being able to quickly create brand new development uh, environments um, or, or staging environments or even going to production. Um, control, controlling uh, specific configurations through uh, environment variables. Uh, so on this presentation, there's a link. Um, it, if, if you have time, you can go ahead and click on it. But it, it shows you where uh, it's it's all, like uh, these um, environment specific configurations are all available on the GitLab uh, website, um, and also things like the server side console. And um, this is an example of uh, how uh, a, a a website um, our, basically a, a project will be released um, using only uh, Docker Compose, uh, basically completely on on Docker images. Um, and, and notice that there, there's no building uh, of the image uh, when we go live, because everything should have been built already and tested. <clears throat> uh, so this is an example of the GitLab interface. Uh, it, it's basically, it, it, you can store all of your Git uh, source code, as well as get uh, access to the log on your server to see, uh, to do any um, debugging. Um, it, this is just a, a few of the functionality that they offer, which I think is, is pretty appealing. Um, why wait com components? Uh, there's a link to Glide Token about what we're trying to do. Uh, there's a very large uh, uh, search method that we have where lots of different components searching on very um, different factors. Um, and what, what we find is that that has become very hard, hard to manage. Um, and uh, this is, on the right hand side, we, what we did uh, was, well, what I've been working on is creating a prototype of something based on web components. Um, so what this is, is basically a, uh, it's a Jekyll site where you have all the static information on the Jekyll on GitHub, it's, or, or, or GitLab. And it's, uh, you can link 
you link your domain name to this Jekyll site that GitLab hosts. Um, and the, the Jekyll site contains all the static information. Uh, and uh, I was able to add in uh, a web component using NPM as a, as a module on top of the Jekyll. And then uh, compile that into uh, one JavaScript uh, file so that you can easily have web components on Jekyll, uh, which is a, a static uh, static page that's not hosted on on my server. It's it's hosted on GitLab or or GitHub, even. Oh, sorry. Uh, so basically, uh, one of the things that we're switching to is uh, Polymer, so that there's a, which gives a lot more functionality for these various web, web components. Um, and th this data part is using the Sparklist API server. Uh, for the batch hackathon, I'd like to focus on these web component issues that we're facing, um, as well as a, a batch ETL process, which I think the CWL uh, discussion has been very interesting uh, to talk about, and also uh, working on a possible uh, demo site for, for web components using static uh, RDF. Uh, thank you.